Hi, everybody, and welcome to NWS Live on this Thursday afternoon, almost evening. I'm Jordan Angeli, and I will be joined in just a few minutes by Jeff Kasouf and Lori Lindsay. But first off, I wanted to start with this. We wanted to take some time to recognize the current events in the US and around the world in regards to fighting for racial equality and justice. As a group here at NWSL and NWSL Alive, along with Equalizer Soccer, we are choosing to highlight the strong voices in the NWSL community who have spoke out over the last few weeks. We wanna share this video with you guys now. sad i'm confused um and i'm hurting my heart is hurting for the victims for their for their families for their friends and i think now is a really crucial time for us to be proud of who we are and to speak out boldly against these injustices This is essentially my life, even if you're not a, a person of color, you have to understand that this is a human rights issue at the end of the day. Black people in this country do not feel safe and, and they're not being made to feel safe by the very people who are supposed to protect us. As tumultuous as it's been, like I am hopeful. I posted an Instagram the other day and one of my friends from home actually posted a great Maya Angelou quote that I thought fit so well with what I was kind of saying. It says, do the best you can until you know better. When you know better, do better. And I think that really summed up like how I feel right now and how I feel what a lot of people can take from this whole situation. I feel like super fortunate to be surrounded by people who I feel get it and if they don't get it are willing to learn about it and willing to not let things be pushed under the rug. We are in a very difficult and unprecedented time. We are in the midst of a global pandemic and our nation is in a state of alarming discord in response to blatant racial injustices. This is a difficult time for many of my teammates and many of our fans. I think we need to all work together to win this fight. Thank you guys for allowing us to start off the show like that. Uh, this has been uh, something that as I bring in my two co-hosts here, Lori Lindsay and Jeff Kasouf, we have been talking about over the last few weeks, how do we uh, properly start a show like this, um, being who we are, but also knowing that there's so many strong voices and uh, people in this league. And I think that this was the perfect way to start, Lori. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think what we're seeing is these players starting to really find their voices. And unfortunately, due to the racial injustices in this country, the overt racism, the oppression of black people, um, it is really unfortunate that's the way that um, w they're having a platform, especially in, I think in soccer, which has been predominantly a white sport and there hasn't been um, a lot of opportunities to speak out. Um, but at the same time, I think we absolutely are seeing that and we are seeing 
um, a lot of the white players in the sport as well. And there's no doubt education is a major part of this. Education, listening, and actually believing the players, believing their experiences and what's happening, and action, right? And um, going forward with action. I think Crystal done, and we'll have a series of different um, tweets and, and articles that have that we've all been a part of or or read that um, really spoke to us as well um, regarding a number of black athletes as well in the NWSL. I think Crystal hit it um, on the head in terms of media, right? In terms of the part that we play, how we speak about black athletes, how uh, media speaks about um, black athletes. And um, it's really, again, about education and listening and, and believing in and acting. Yeah. Jeff, for you, I know you've spent a lot of this time the last couple of weeks interviewing and chatting with a lot of different athletes. How, how have you felt that has helped um, just educate you in this time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, certainly not a, about me, but, but you know, is um, a learning experience, a listening, a time for listening. Um, and, you know, I think that there's been um, slowly, you know, through the days and weeks, there's been more conversation, which I think we're obviously going to need a lot more of um, and, and sustained over time. I think, as Lori said, that's kind of the key that um, it's not just now. I think, you know, there's, there's a realization point right now, a reflection point right now that um, maybe, you know, we, myself included, just haven't thoroughly, thoroughly had. Um, and now, you know, from here, it's about putting that into action. Mm -hmm. um, just want to tell everybody that Jeff with Equalizer Soccer is um, they have been working on some articles, some podcasts, uh, things to continue to show these voices that have continued to speak up over the last few uh, weeks that they can, uh, you can go to Equalizer Soccer to look for those. Um, also, I've shared in the chat right now a few different articles that uh, Lori and Jeff and I have read and think that they're important voices to be heard around right now. Um, this is an important issue to everyone. We want to make sure we spoke about it uh, up front. Sports unite us. They give us a platform and we continue to amplify these voices within our sport to the best of our ability and use sport in these articles that we continue to talk about and these voices to continue to educate us, learn, listen to all these players and people who are out there speaking up. We encourage you guys uh, to read those links, those articles, Meg Linehan at The Athletic, uh, Jeff, I mentioned at Equalizer, Lori, I know that you, um, All for 11, had a an article as well. Yep. In, yeah. Yeah. Um, that and then also Lindsay. Well. Sorry, and then Lindsay Gibbs from Power Plays as well had a great article about Kaya McCullough from a uh, uh, new draftee or rookie for the Washington Spirit um, from UCLA. Right. All great um, resources, but I think I can speak to all of us that um, we're continuing to educate. We're continuing to um, have t communications and that's starting with us, right? And that's one of the things I thought was powerful about that video is uh, just the unity within the league and within the players of having the conversations and educating and doing something with them first, right? So um, we're excited to see these players continue to amplify their voices on all different platforms. And one of that, those platforms, you guys, is playing the game that we all love and they are going to be the first team sport back in the united states as the challenge cup is set to kick off june 27th and this is an exciting news for everyone right and um, such a key thing that they get to be the first ones back on the pitch yeah i heard a rumor that they'll be first that's what I heard. Of. <laughs> <laughs> Can we joke about that? Right? Uh, yeah, they they are are the yeah, they are going to be the first. Yeah, they are going to be the first. We had a little opportunity to speak with Commissioner Lisa Baird a couple of weeks ago about how everything was dreamt up and how they executed the plans. But today, you guys, we are going to dive into the details. We decided that this was going to be an episode where we started to preview a refresher on NWSL teams, but really a challenge cup preview. So are you guys ready? I'm gonna kind of lay it out for everybody about what we're gonna do here. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I, I needed to hear ready. it. I needed to hear it. <laughs> I needed to hear it. Okay. Um, we're going to speak about each of the nine NWSL teams for a set amount of time. Now, 
I think I'm going to time it, actually. I think I'm going to bring my phone out and time it and uh, give us five minutes per team. Now, that is going to fly by. So what's going to happen is I'm going to bring a team up. Uh, I'm going to start one with Lori, the next one with Jeff, and we're going to talk about the team. Maybe things that come up first in our mind, things that we're thinking about with this squad. And I also want to preface this before we get into this Challenge Cup preview with the thought that we are going off of what we know right now uh, that is given out to the public as far as who is playing in this tournament. We look at NWSL, we see the rosters. Those are the teams that we're expect we are prepping for. Now, one of the greatest things that's come out of this, in my opinion, is the work that NWSL PA has done with NWSL ensuring that players have a choice and an opportunity to play or not to play. And that does not affect whether or not they get their contract or it gets paid out this year. So uh, we don't know who all is going to play, but we're going to, we're going to do our preview anyways, right? Because I think that's the best part. These are the teams that um, we think are going to be going and should we start? I think we, we'll just go alphabetical, right? We'll just keep it easy that way. Is that good? You guys? Uh, <laughs> it sounds okay. good to me. We're going to go. We're going to go first with the Chicago Red Stars. So I'm going to start with you, Lori. You're right next to me. Okay. So that seems that seems right. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think of when you first think of the Chicago Red Stars and them entering this Challenge Cup tournament? <laughs> I thought you were just going to say in general. And I'm like, <laughs> we all know what we think of. And so then don't say it, right, in terms of <laughs> Sam Kerr. Um, but I think, um, you know, the Chicago Red Stars – just and for a plain like personal reasons, I love them. I love how this team has grown over the seven prior seasons, how they have really kind of built through draft picks and then made strategic um, changes in the draft when they need to or, or just trades or allocation money. Um, I think the big question is, though, so they are at the top of the list for me. Um, I don't know if they're quite number one because I think there's some question marks in terms of Sam Kerr. I mean, Sam Kerr was a huge... I mean, she was like their life force when it was in, in the attacking third. And so I think there's some question marks in terms of what is Kalia Ojai, who's coming from Houston Dash, is she going to be able to produce um, the way that they might think she will be able to? Savannah McCaskill, um, who else? Mackenzie Duniak, who's coming from Utah. I mean, this, so there's some pieces that they have filled to help um, bring, you know, to alleviate the departure of Sam Kerr. But I think, you know, there's still some question marks in that final third. But the core of their players – extremely solid that midfield i think you can put them up against anybody in the nwsl and they would do better than just fine so top for me but some question marks in the final third all right jeff do yeah, you agree I mean, with what laurie's saying here i do agree <laughs> I, I do agree and not and so as to not repeat I'll, I'll add on to you know i wonder about the back line too as we talk about you know personnel available really and and what what they're going to look like. And, um, you know, Katie Naughton trade away in, in the off season um, that obviously, you know, that, that's certainly depth at a minimum in the back. And I think that could, you know, does that cause a, a little bit of a shuffle in terms of who's playing where um, in what position? So I think that could be a slight tweak for them in terms of uh, maybe not so much shape, just as much as personnel in, in certain positions. So, um, you know, I think a theme through this is going to be, um, like many teams, you know, and to Lori's point about upfront, there's going to be some adjustment. And I think, you know, we'll go through some of these where teams, there are other teams that need even more adjustments or have more rebuilds going on. But, um, you know, I think it's going to be who's going to be able to adapt the, the quickest really in this tournament. Adapting the quickest might be leaning on if your team is cohesive, right? And I think when you look at the Chicago Red Stars, Lori, one of the things you think of first and foremost is they've been a pretty much the same unit for the, the majority of the last, I would say, since NWSL starts, right? They've had these players that are consistently with them. You think that's going to pay off for them in this type of tournament? Oh, I do. I mean, even just in the notes and in the prep for this, this show and thinking about how much some teams have quite a few changes. I think that's going to be difficult, especially when you think about back to back games, um, not much time to rest. They're going to have to utilize players and experience, I really believe, is going to pay off because it is about being able to jump into these games quickly. And, you know, as this league has developed and gotten stronger throughout the years, it's been proven that it's been difficult for a lot of rookies to come in and make a huge impact. So the 
the more experience you have, and then the rookies can kind of like fill in some of the vacant spots here or there, but not expected to carry the load, the better. And that's why we've seen Chicago really rise through the ranks over the years. Difficult losing in the semifinals, but then obviously in the final this past year. And so I, I, I put them right up there. Is Jeff, is this going to be their time to get that, that trophy, <laughs> that championship? I, yeah, I guess it depends. It depends how this one counts. It'd be a different trophy, Lisa told us. So, um, I mean, certainly they should be in the hunt, uh, certainly. And when you look at some of the other teams that um, have some question marks as well. The thing that sticks out to me, and I know this was mentioned, but the addition of Kalia Ojai from the Houston Dash. Jeff, how does she fit in with this squad when you're looking at overall structure? And does, is it a benefit to her? Yeah, I mean, I, look, I think you know she's she's versatile enough to be playing on a on a front line as you know. I, I think a nine seven eleven. I mean, certainly, I would say with pace that she has, um, and and her experience is more of a winger. Um, but you know, I, I think again, this is a question back to like what is what is that shape going to look like for for Chicago because they don't have Sam Kerr, which I, I know you know we've talked about a lot, but having a player for a caliber dictates how you play to a degree and, and it's going to have to look different, I think, uh, from a shape perspective. So, um, but, but I like, yeah, I think, I think Watt coming in from wide spaces is typically where we'd expect. Yeah. I'm interested to see. All right, you guys, that was a little under five minutes. So you guys did good there. Four minutes and 30 seconds on the red stars, a good way to start it off. Uh, we're going to go down South. Now we're going to head to Houston where Kaylee Ojai used to play. And we're going to talk about <laughs> what's happening with the Dash. And we're going to start with you, Jeff, your thoughts on the Houston Dash as they enter into this Challenge Cup tournament. Yeah, so I think, you know, I, I guess I was alluding to teams that need to to gel. Um, I think this is among the the teams, maybe in the top third of teams, that is is a question for me in terms of how quickly they can do that. And I think they brought in some some good pieces uh, in, in Megan Oyster um, is a very solid addition to the back line. Shea Groom, I think is, is an underrated player. Um, Katie Stengel, you know, similarly. Um, so I think there's, there's good pieces in Houston. I feel like we've been asking similar questions about Houston for a few years in terms of, are they at that point? Um, and, and it was probably a similar question coming into the season, if it were a full season. And I think probably, that's just you know um, even more exaggerated um, with this short tournament format. So, you right. know, uh, back to the gelling. And I, but I think that I think that they've made um, small scale improvements across the pitch. So we'll see how that plays out. Lori, if you're looking at those small scale improvements, maybe where do you feel like is the biggest advantage in those improvements for the Houston Dash this year? Yeah, you know, looking at this team, I, I'm not so sure. I don't actually know. I mean, I think Jeff hit it on the head when he's saying they have made some small adjustments. I think looking at this team, some of the biggest um, issues – that they've had over the years is not having somebody that's extremely dynamic. Yes, they have Rachel Daly, right? but at the same time, they don't have somebody that's a, like a world beater or a game changer on their roster that has consistently been able to produce when a team kind of gets in a rut or needs somebody to pull them out and um, carry their team on their shoulders. And, and even with these small adjustments, I don't feel like they've been able to provide that so i'm curious about that what that is but again i mean i i would go with shea groom i would go with katie stangle i think she's going to be good with back to her goal and being able to play off shea groom and rachel daly if that's where they end up playing rachel daly and i think the thing is though this team is going to have to gel quickly because again it's going to come quick and so if they can that might work to their benefit because they'll be right. able to have a co cohesive unit and then also rotate players. I think you're seeing some players that can play in multiple positions as well. Christy Mewis can play a number of different positions. Yeah. They're going to have to utilize that and figure out where, what works. So, well, talk to me about this, Jeff, because my idea, I think of a lot of those things that Lori said are right is players playing in multiple positions. But when I think about how they shored up the back line and brought in some players that can help them along the back line, it allows those players who have played in multiple positions to then play a little bit higher up on the field. 
Yeah, and I would actually, I'd argue a little bit with Lori here. Um, I know okay. she loves that. Um, you know, I think Rachel Daly, <laughs> I think Rachel Daly has taken on that role a little bit in terms of having to to shoulder that in the past. And I think where maybe Houston's been let down a little bit is is the complementary pieces. So, you know, in some ways, maybe that's how they're seeing these additions to the roster, and 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 they've kind of tightened that up a little bit, and maybe that. You know, now in a way that almost rewards um, what she's been able to do, among others, obviously. But but I think she has done that a little bit. Um, and I would say we should tell people, Jordan, that they should feel free to argue with us in the chat. Oh yeah, <laughs> always, <laughs> always we'll argue your, with us. The chat is over here. I don't know which side. Yeah, it's we on appreciate there. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let us know because I like that. Jeff is challenging Lori a little bit there, and. One of the things she has carried the weight, but can she carry that weight higher up on the field is what I'm trying to say too, right? Because she has been having to play some defensive, um, had some defensive responsibilities as well, Lori. Yeah. And, and I think to take that a step further, I think if you're looking and I'm, how I'm explaining like a world beater, right? You're looking at like a Sam Curry, you're looking at these players, you're looking at like a, a Jess Fishlock that is like really like enough's enough and taking their Megan Rapino when she <laughs> was healthy a few years ago and playing, right? Like, I mean, um, we're, I mean, we're talking about a play that's taking over and I'm not saying by it at all that yeah. Rachel Daly hasn't done that just in terms of goal producing. And again, I think right. the important thing to remember is there's been a lot of movement in the off season and mm -hmm. it's really about what's exciting going to be exciting about this challenge cup is the movement and how these new, how these players fit into different teams, because I think there's a lot of players right. we still haven't seen their potential yet for one reason or another, on the team that they were on and how they'll fit into the puzzle on another team. And I think we're in for a treat um, yeah. come end of yeah. end of this month for some of these players. All right. All right. That's just about five minutes there too. And I had to put this up from Mike, the dash have a hell of a keeper. I think they have, we'll have a great tournament. Well, I like that from you, Mike. I like that you added in there. Um, that's it. Anybody <laughs> last, last comments on the Houston dash before we say on to the next, we good. I'm going to bring them out of here. We're going to go on. You know what I've noticed in this is we have a, a very bottom heavy um, group teams with the names, right? You, you only have mm -hmm. Chicago <laughs> and Houston up there. We're going to go now to North Carolina. And you guys, um, I'm going to start with you, Lori, on this one while I um, host slash producer try to find my North Carolina image. Uh, Lori, I'm going to start with you. The Courage. The defending champs. Uh, yeah, give listen. It to us. What's your first thought? Um, I this is a this is going to be a well-oiled machine, no doubt. I mean, uh, Paul Riley, year in, year out, um, regardless of what's thrown their way, um, gets his team prepared. Love him or hate him, he his teams are ready. And I think when you're talking about a quick a quick turnaround and then a quick tournament. Uh, this team is at the top of the list for me. Uh, I think the, the one question mark in, that I have is with Merritt Mathias, um, season ending injury last year with her knee, not quite ready, it sounds like, or, or that's still a question mark, I should say, because I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. But the right back, right? They're, we know that their back, their wing backs are an uh, integral part in them getting forward and getting into the cr attack, creating numbers up situation. So who's going to fill that role? Uh, but across the board, so much depth, so much experience, very little turnover. I would say this is the least amount of turnover we see in a team. And I think that's going to pay dividends um, big time coming into this, this tournament. Do you have any objections to that? No, I don't have any objections. I'm <laughs> laughing at them. <laughs> The most recent comment that I know I got, I'm going to get that in there. Don't oh, worry. missing it. What is it? Um, the, the courage of the I was going to say that the Bayern Munich of the <laughs> NWSL because the Bayern Munich yeah. has like within the Bundesliga has, and they've been the only league back so far, but they have hit the ground running. Anyway, right. go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think the only when when you can go into a season as two time defending champions and say your only real question is who's filling in at fullback. Um, you know, I think you're in pretty good shape. So, um, you know, I, I talked to Paul Riley recently. I know they're working on some different wrinkles too, um, formationally system, you know, for the system. 
um, to, <laughs> to throw some different looks, which I'm sure everybody's thrilled about for opponents. octagon midfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody play everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I think he's got a, several options at that fullback, that right back position. Um, and, and that's really the big question. I mean, I think they will be fit as they always are. That's going to benefit them in this format. And, you know, it's, it's going to be, I think it's tough to sit here and say anybody but North Carolina is a favorite. And I think, you know, somebody could say, well, that sounds too cliche or, or lazy, but you have to, I mean, this is a, t a league where there's a lot of rebuilding often. And a lot of teams went into this off season rebuilding. I think some of them for the long haul that they needed a full season for that to pay off even. And, you know, the, the goal, even from team number two or however you want to view them of Portland was just catch up to North Carolina. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you could say in a tournament format, you could do that with a fluky result or two, but I think it probably makes it harder to do that. Lori, you've played for Paul Riley. Meticulous. Is that a good word <laughs> to describe how he prepares a team for competition? That wouldn't have been the word that came to mind, but I like yeah. that word. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but I, there's, it is buy-in, I should say. Buy you, it okay. is like you, it's like get on board because we are win. There is a competition within the squad that you very, I have very rarely seen in my playing career ever in terms of, but then also a buy-in as a team collectively and what the mission is. It's yeah. the best way for me to, to put it. Jeff, when you think of North Carolina Courage, I think a lot of people could name their starting 11, but they have options off the bench. How key is their depth going to be in this tournament as well? Yeah, and I think that that's what um, Emily was asking there too. And, I, you know, I think certainly we've talked about it. I've written about it. I mean, this is a team that for years before the rosters even expanded in this league kept four, five, six, you know, several more players around in their training environment than, um, you know, were, were even allowed on the roster and they, they weren't officially on the roster, but they were in the training environment. And, and that was for a reason. It was planning two years in advance and two years mm -hmm. ahead. So um, same thing with the idea of, you know, what are they going to look like in the future? Like, I think they were planning for 2021 and 2019. So, you know, th this is <laughs> the thought process and, and that depth yeah. is going to pay off. Yeah. No finish line, right? <laughs> we've, we've seen that well, before we get off the courage because we've got a few more seconds here difficult to call um, from Mike Patton saying wish they had a few games under the belt before this tournament I'm I'm sure every team feels that way Mike right <laughs> they're saying we wish we had got to play and see what our team and our squad is like before this tournament um, I, I can imagine there has been since they've started some full team trainings, there's going to be a lot of 11 v 11 situations if they can manage that with squad numbers, because um, games are going to come fast and furious. So that's five minutes on the North Carolina Courage. We're moving right along here. We're going to go to uh, the new logo, should we just say, the new team name. Uh, we're going to go OL Rain next. Uh, same Rain squad, different coach. Jeff, I'm going to start you off on this one. What are your thoughts of OL Rain? You know, I, I'd actually say a very different Rain squad potentially just because of, I mean, last year, you know, we've talked about before and, and don't need to repeat too much of like the remarkable job that, that Vladko Anonofsky did with uh, half his roster was injured at some point in the season. And he, I mean, he was, <laughs> you know, it was like, oh my gosh. it was like, who could walk today and, and we'll put you in the 18. So I um, almost called me and Lori. Yeah. Like, hey. um, I mean, case in point, Stephanie Cox did return off the yeah. coaching staff so, yeah. to play. So, so I mean, I think you know, there's a lot of of almost new faces. I mean, even you look at a player like Taylor Smith, who I think you know was great in North Carolina, um, maybe had a, an off year in Washington, and and the rain signed her, invested in her, even though she was already out for the season in 2019 and just looking toward 2020. So, you know, great example of a player who was there, but not on the field with them. So I think they've actually got a fair number of, of new players in, in some sense of the word. And then obviously a new coach, I think, you know, we know the history in this league that, that there's not always been immediate success for coaches that are not 
specifically familiar with the the talent pool, the system, you know, some of the quirky rules, which maybe aren't totally in play because of the format this year. But, um, you know, I think that's all going to create a little bit of a question mark for me in terms of how that comes together. Lori, you're looking at this rain squad. There's some key players, though, within this team that have been there for since the get go. Well, since the get go. And then you think about adding Shirley Cruz um, with oh, her experience. Yes. You think about adding two veterans in the leagues. Um, uh, Sofia Huerta, you have Amber Brooks coming in. And again, I think it's just about kind of what what can these players have been in the league that have been with a specific team going to another team and a lot of times that can really rejuvenate somebody's career um, just with having um, a new environment, a fresh environment, different um, style of play. And this is a team that has historically um, loved to play possession oriented. So I'm curious that that's still going to be the key. And I think, I think it will looking at this roster. Um, I'm excited about them. I think the big question marks though, um, dating back from last season with the injuries is your goalkeeper and really like a solid um, back line, what's that going to look like? So there's a couple of question marks defensively, but if, if they can, if they can get the ball on the ground and start moving, like we've seen this, this, uh, rain team do in the past. Um, wow. And that could pay right. off, especially when you're yeah. playing in Utah at elevation in some of the heat. So uh -huh. I think that, I think Jeff does, um, make a good point though, about buy-in and how collectively they can come together under, under a new coach. The Jeremy saying Jeremy being no oyster, no Catley poses some questions on the back line. Mm -hmm. Is that sorry sure. to interrupt you there, Jeff? Is that something that no, you I'm think of this team and you think, do we think Taylor Smith, who is yeah. a great outside back, you think she's going to be ready to, to step in and knowing from a person who's come off that injury, maybe not all the minutes that she can give right away, but she could give minutes and really have an opportunity to work herself back in to some really big quality minutes as well. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, the first name that jumps out in terms of certainly the fullback position. I mean, Catley is a, a big loss. Um, I, I did want to say, I think Lori made a good point too. Um, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think these things are overplayed, but the altitude, you know, the rain we should note are training in Montana right now, which, you know, something of a, a shot up on the map from Utah, similar elevation. Um, and, and I wonder what that maybe does for them. You know, th there are some teams training in heat, obviously, but I think that could be maybe a little bit of an advantage in terms of assimilation because some of these teams are getting in only a few days before they're playing into Utah. So yeah. um, I think that's a, a good point from Lori that, that maybe yeah. that's something to keep an eye on in terms of lungs and legs for the rain. Well, just personally for me growing up in Colorado, I always – really much loved I, I very much loved coming back and training in the off season here because I knew that that would be an advantage for me going back into preseason at altitude working with that day in and day out so I'm with you Jeff I'm with you Lori I think that that's a smart and the, the restrictions in Seattle in Tacoma in the Washington area for the rain were not an, not enabling them to be able to play so they had to adapt right and I want to say too quickly, I mean, we'll talk players in depth maybe next week, but one player we didn't say here was Yuka Momiki, um, who is new to the scene yes. in the league for the team. And, you know, I think, you know, excited to see what she's going to bring even in a short time span here. Yeah. And we don't know. I like this last comment here. Uh, the back line will be in danger, but could you play Sofia Huerta as a wing back? Could they play a three back? Um, like Jill pushed her, played her on the national team. Jaren, I, I'm not opposed to that. It's a good show. Yeah, it is. So, I, I mean, we also have Amber Brooks. She can play the midfield. I say we, they have Amber, Amber <laughs> Brooks. <laughs> um, you know, she could play in multiple different positions. I think that's an, actually a really key, um, well, we're doing good. And I'm going over now <laughs> by just minutes. continuing to chat. Anyway, good pickups okay. no, by Oil Rain. That can be yes. versatile. Right. No, that was good. I feel like we we could go on and on with a lot of these squads, right? And I think that's the point of having the timer is we have to keep ourselves in in this parameter. So um, <laughs> good chat there. And, and some really good key names, I think, that uh, it has been a long time since we heard all these acquisitions that it's nice to refresh people that uh, some of these big time players are now with OL Reign uh, in addition to who they already have. So uh, let's go down 
the draft what, seems Lori? like years ago. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? January? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really has. Uh, it has been years ago, I think. Um, we're going to go down to Florida now. We're going to hit the Orlando Pride. Who did I start with last time? I think I started with Lori, so I'm going Jeff. Is that correct? That's correct. I'll no, take it. Not. It might have been the reverse, but. I'll, okay. Well, there's nine you, yeah. teams, so. Yeah. <laughs> Lori, Lori got Portland then, I guess. Um, I'm, okay. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be cliche on it or, or to, I mean, this is tough. I, like they got a tough draw. It's a team that we know is is coming off a very bad 2019 season, obviously, and, and historically so on the goals allowed. And, and um, I think that they did some good things in the off season. I think that, again, those are things that are going to need time and, and would have even in, in a regular full regular season. So, um, you know, I definitely have some questions on, on really all ends of the field. Certainly you can point to the front line and, and obviously if, if you're missing Alex Morgan there and, and, um, you know, you still have talent, obviously Sydney LaRue, Marta is going to be, um, even if she's not on the front line is certainly going to be part of that equation. But, um, the, the problem really last year certainly was in the back line. So bringing in Emily Sonnet, uh, bringing in Ali Riley, you know, two two obvious ones there that yeah. um, international caliber. I think you know you look at this roster. I went through it the other day, and I think it was fourteen, but it's over a dozen players who were at the World Cup last year. So there's individual talent, and for the past couple of years, really, um, I, I guess maybe even since the Pride have, have been in the league, that just hasn't quite come together. And now, obviously, you're asking them to do that in a short format, and uh, through this rebuild and with a tough draw of a schedule. So I think it's going to be tough, but I think that the question, the make or break there is going to be on the back line. How does Emily Sonnet do? Probably I'm assuming anyway, in a center back role, maybe that, maybe that's not the plan, but um, Ali Riley and a, a wing back or a full back role that has to tighten up because the, the 53, 52 goals from last year, um, it just wasn't good enough in the back line. Yeah. That name, being in women's soccer for a long time, knowing Allie Riley, I am just so excited she's playing in NWSL. I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Lori, for you, uh, this Pride team, it seems like they have the components. Will they all come together? Yeah. I mean, I think we're all on the same page here. Or we are on the same page. I mean, that is the question. And I think the thing that's tough is they've, you know, Last year it was it was troublesome in terms of getting anything going really, and they didn't have you know there was a big separation between international players and having some players that were rookies, right? And that's a really big gap to fill, especially in such a competitive, um, well played soccer league, right? I mean yeah. that's a really difficult position to be in. And then they've had years where they've had a star studded team and it just doesn't come together. So the way that I look at it is it's just is a team that has struggled to find a winning way. And I worry that that's still in the, like the back of their heads. And so if they don't get off on the front foot or get a good result the first game, then I worry that that could just that could be an issue because I think mm. it's it's really difficult. I, I like the aggressiveness that Mark Skinner's brought to the team in terms of the mentality he wants to bring, um, what he was doing in the offseason to get Ali Riley to make trades for now and for the future. Um, but at the same time, I think – it's, it takes a while to start to change the mentality and the dynamics of like, and turn it into a, a winning team, regardless of who you have sometimes, right? Because no doubt are there winners on this team. It's just yeah. to change that, that winning to, into a winning culture is, can be challenging. Yeah. And even in conversations that all of us have had with Skinner over, over the last season, right? The, the ideas, the concepts, the thoughts, the motivation, the buy-in is there. It's, it's how do you translate that onto the pitch? Jeff? Yeah. And I think, you know, Lori made the point earlier um, with, with one of the other teams um, about uh, rookies and, and adjustment period and, I think it's shaping up that the Taylor Korniak, um, who you probably know quite well, I'm guessing Jordan from, mm -hmm. from Colorado area, um, is, is going to have a lot of responsibility. So, um, you know, I think that's a, a big piece here that um, where does she play and what is she being asked to do? Um, and, and 
Kim McCauley pointing out too for us, Jade Moore being Orlando's best signing. I think so, you know, they've made, they have pieces and it's, it's got to come together. And um, I'll try to cut, I'll try to stop saying that for some of these teams that it has to come together, but it, it really, for so many of them, save for North Carolina, um, maybe a couple others that we'll get to like, th there are some questions in terms of how to put those together. Yeah, and That's I think this kind of goes along with it, right? Orlando and Sky Blue, team, team, two teams we could have wished to see play full seasons because of that coming together concept uh, that Jeff was just speaking about. Lori, you were going to say something there. Yeah, I was I was just going to piggyback off of what Jeff was saying. I mean, that's exciting and the challenge too is to like mm -hmm. how much can you get done in a short amount of time and then put it out in the field and hope that it does come together. But that's also um, the exciting thing about this tournament is you got to do it. You just it's like yeah. and and honestly, for sometimes as a rookie compared to having a full season, it's just like. I don't have time to think about what I'm doing. Totally. Like I can't get into my head. So we might see some rookies really rise to the occasion more than they've had to have like, cause this is a lot longer season typically than what a lot of the younger players are used to um, coming out of a college season. So. And just more opportunities <laughs> quicker. I actually think yeah. that this is a really good opportunity for rookies, for younger players to come in, make an impact. You know, all you need is a few minutes. I feel like mm -hmm. we know that we've seen rookies do that all over the leagues, right? Is find that opportunity and take a hold of it. And um, there's going to be opportunities because there's going to be a lot of changes. Um, a team that maybe doesn't have a ton of changes. Uh, let's go to Portland Thorns. Lori, <laughs> I'm going to start with you on this one. What's your initial uh, reaction thoughts when you think of the Portland Thorns? Uh, my initial thought is like, Come on, I want more from this team. Is what I I mean, talk about star studded team, and then sometimes right. you're like, and I would tell Mark Parsons to his face about this, like, I love Mark, but it's like, ah, sometimes you're just wanting more out of this team. And don't get me wrong, and sometimes they show up and you're like, okay, there it is, what in the world? But I think we have seen some ups and downs and a little bit of a roller coaster ride for the talent they have, uh, you know, but. Listen, one of my favorite players, Rocky Rodriguez, is on this team now. Um, I'm excited what she can bring. I think that she will fill some major shoes in there in terms of alleviating um, some of the pressure that you would see on a Christine Sinclair or even Lindsey Horan in that midfield. And um, and also Becky Sauerbrunn. I mean, you're bringing in an experienced, confident, consistent leader on your team, which I would, which I would argue was a little bit of the issues for – Portland is that they were fairly consistent in a lot of positions and the back line sometimes was a bit erratic and, and could be all over the place and which would let, and there'd be some errors. So I think that we can see Becky come in and bring in some consistent um, leadership back there that could kind of like solidify and bring in some confidence um, across the board. I do want to say some one thing before I get to Jeff. I'm getting chirped because there should be two stars on this image. Oh. Uh, we, this was the image I was given. I am so sorry about that, you guys. And I am acknowledging <laughs> this. Trina, I'm acknowledging Trina said it twice. I see you, girl. I got the wrong <laughs> image. But we know, we all know there's two stars here. If I could draw it on right now, yeah, I would I'm draw it on. I am right taking, now. producer host Jordan is taking the hit on that one, and I'm okay with that. I apologize. Um, okay, I just had to say that, Jeff, before we got into that. Mark Parsons <laughs> is sorry. putting that He's putting that on the wall in the locker room. Mark's putting it on his list of Jordan things. <laughs> a new, the new Listen, underdog. That's a, that's a Paul Riley tactic, yeah, right? He would like oh my scratch gosh. out the one, two, and be like. Do I keep it off or do I take it down? Um, yeah, yeah. The, Portland, the new underdog. Um, I think all of those things plus a question up top. I mean, Mitch Purse, Haley Rasso out, um, you know, wondering <laughs> wondering um you know what who's who's up top here is it sophia smith um you know morgan weaver i think even even more so of a you know wondering how much of a, a load is put on her up top um and i think to that point too i mean speaking earlier about about these rookies and like the schedule is going to demand that you know i think most teams i'm not going to say all but most teams are going to have to rotate some of their roster, whether that's a starting 11, whether that's, you know, pulling somebody in the 50th minute, whatever that looks like. So 
these players are going to get opportunities, but, you know, certainly up top, I think, um, you know, Portland's thing at the end of last year. And, and I think, you know, Mark Parsons has been very transparent about this is there wasn't um, not even just a chemistry, but that there was a lack of full buy-in, I think from the, the full group. And I think you've seen some changes um, and, you know, now what does that look like in this short tournament and, and who's, who's carrying that scoring load. And, and, you know, Sophia Smith, obviously, I think will, will have some of that pressure, um, you know, not, not singularly, but, um, you know, I'm curious to see who's scoring those goals. And I don't know. I think, you know, I, I laughed at Lori's sort of first reaction to Portland of like, come on. But, you know, I, I think that's how they felt a little bit, certainly mm-hmm. last year. So um, they know that, you know, short tournament or not, that this is, you know, winning is really – the standard for them. Yeah. And it's not as if they haven't thought that too, you know, and I think knowing some of the players on the team, they're, they know what they have and they're ready to get to that next level and get another um, star on their press. <laughs> um, I do want to say, I do want to say uh, Trina was the one that pointed that out. A couple other people pointed that out, but Trina said, I'm a proud PTFC season ticket holder since day one. Trina, you are what this league is all about. We are so thankful for you. Um, thanks for joining and listening and watching this as well. But um, yeah, next time in Portland, I'm in Portland watching a game. I'm going to have to come say hi to you. So um, I'll give you, I'll present you with a star as well. The, these, uh, these team, this team um, has everything that they, they need, right? Lori, we, you talked about, you both talked about North Carolina maybe being the favorite in this. It, does Portland have what it takes to also be at the top of this when, when it comes to it? Oh, most definitely. I mean, if you look across the, the board with the players, the quality of players, the experience they have, uh, 100%. Again, I think it, it kind of goes back and it, it because of the nature of the tournament, um, the, the amount of time that's been off for a majority of these players, it really does come back to who is going to be able to perform from day one and really mm-hmm. kind of set that standard and, and actually get better as the tournament goes on, which I expect yeah. from, from most teams, right? At the same time as they kind of get right. going, but at the same time, it's going to be a lot of teams going to need to hit the ground running. Yeah. Just had to put that sentiment in there too. Sentiment about can't wait to see Rocky. I think we're all really intrigued about what that's going to look like with Rocky Rodriguez on this uh, Portland Thorns team. All right, moving right along. <laughs> love, hold on. I love Trina. Trina's like, in the she should interview fans. You're the first one, Trina. <laughs> Trina, I mean, she she brought it up. Do we bring Trina on? We're gonna we're gonna oh, chat Trina. with you, Trina. Trina, we're gonna we're gonna chat with you. All right, Sky Blue FC, Jeff, you're gonna start us off with this one. Um, a lot of changes, a lot of positive changes. How will it all come together? First thoughts on Sky Blue. Yeah, I I think Sky Blue is a much better team than um, I think their name. Maybe, maybe uh, I, I think people hear the name and and think maybe 2018, let's say, and this is a team that was better in 2018 than they probably looked on paper or certainly their record. Same for 2019, and I think that on paper they'd built a 2020 squad that was a playoff contender. So certainly in this tournament, I think that still applies. I mean, some questions certainly um, in, in how it comes together, but. Um, you know, from, from front to back, I think they've got solid pieces. I mean, Freya Coombe first full, well, full season, I guess I can't say either, but, um, you know, taking over this team full time, let's say. Um, So I think this is a team that actually could quietly compete and in in a tournament format like this, you know, semis, does it shake out that they can get a favorable path to a final? I think that's realistic depending on, um, you know, we'll see how this this shakes out, but depending on um, that draw and, and how this team comes together. Yeah. One of the things I think about, Lori, is Mal Pugh playing with Carly Lloyd. You think about Carly Lloyd, one of the best attackers ever. Mal Pugh, young, uh, she can, is continuing to learn as she grows. Uh, is that going to be a good pairing in this Sky Blue team? We'll see. 
<laughs> uh, Way to keep you know, it neutral. I, I, think abso I, abso I absolutely, I think I can. You know, I, I'm looking at it a little bit differently with this team. And okay. it, it's similar to Orlando in terms of, you know, they haven't had a winning culture um, in a number of seasons. And, um, but you, you've brought in some players that are going to be hungry, right? You mentioned Mal Pugh. Yeah. I think people are waiting for her to have even a more of a breakout season. McCall Zaboni after, you know, not playing a ton after nearly making the world cup team, then to not playing a ton with, um, with the North Carolina courage to ultimately getting traded. She's going to be hungry to make a statement on this team. So we're going to see, it's going to be fairly similar. I think um, back line, plus you can have a hungry coach. You have Becca Morris on the um, staff too, who's a former player from Utah Royals FC. So I think there's going to be a lot more, there's going to be some understanding and a hungry yeah. culture. So I think no, do no doubt. Um, I, I say we'll see because I mean, we will see, but at the yeah. same time, I think there's going to be players that um, are going to be ready to step up regardless of who they're playing with, particularly on this team that are going to want to do whatever it takes to like combine and partner up with, with who they're playing next to. Right. Well, and Mitch uh, Purse too, we should say, I mean, that's, that's exactly. the Manu. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, she, and in a format like this, forward, fullback, I mean, you need mm -hmm. to rotate her around for saving legs. I think that's a, an advantage for them. Yeah, I think that's one of the players I think of this Sky Blue squad, and I'm really interested in where she's going to fit in, right? Where they're going to utilize her because she can, she is versatile. Um, one of the things I wanted to share is this uh, Robert Rogers saying uh, just the work that Elise has done to build a, a championship caliber team. Uh, this is been a transformation and i just have to say from someone that doesn't has never played for sky blue only played against them the work that has been put in to uh, listen to the players and to improve things i think we all can say well done right 100 percent. 100 yeah. percent. a lot of people a lot of sky blue people talking right now um it, it's it's fun because i feel like they were just waiting, right? They're sitting here waiting for this to, to happen. Um, you talked about Zerboni, but Eddie uh, back together in the midfield. Someone, uh, Robert, again, can't wait to see that. Um, Elizabeth Eddie, another one of those players who's really versatile and can play in multiple positions. So, um, Lori, last thoughts on Sky Blue before we run out of time here? Yeah, I mean, I think... The big thing is, is uh, and I briefly mentioned this, the back line I think will be fairly the same. And then one of the best goalkeepers, Kaylin Sheridan, um, in the league. And I think he, that was pretty apparent last season that they were difficult to get scored on, but they were having mm -hmm. trouble to score. And so now with these additions, I, I really think that we could see this team, and I say sneak into the semifinals potentially because – we haven't seen them do it, right? So it will be yeah. sneaking in there and they'll be surprising yeah. everyone. So, um, but at the same time, again, credit to everybody that's been involved in this organization because they really have made massive steps and it would have been exciting to see even more so, um, unfortunately without the pandemic, what it had been like playing at Red Bulls yeah. arena and how mm -hmm. that even amplified their, their organization even more. Right. Um, so I got to share this last one. Uh, Anumanu a very, is very good indeed. And as a Rain fan, I'm still personally slighted by losing her. Jen, we can fail you because you know you don't want to play against her. That's the quality that Anumanu <laughs> brings to the field. So um, had to get that one in there and give a little love. We saw Anumanu in uh, the earlier video that we showed. So um, good to get some love there. Okay, you guys, we're getting down to it. Two teams left. We are going to go to... Utah Royals FC, the hosts are up next. I think it's Lori's turn to start. Is that right? You guys, this is hard. It's hard to remember. Okay, well, I'll go. Uh, okay. I've got a lot of question marks. I, I have a lot of question marks about this team. New coach. Um, I think one of the things that was has been a, a difficult – um, or an issue for this team is a lot of similar type players. And again, it's, it's a little bit like Houston dash for me where they didn't have, I mean, yes, you have Kristen press, you had um, Vera Bouquet, right. And um, mm -hmm. Amy Rodriguez, some of the best ever. Um, but when you didn't have 
Kristen Press when she was gone for the World Cup, right? It, basically, you had two players that were like really kind of elevating this team. And that's not taking anything away. It was just a lot of similar players, especially in the midfield. So I felt like they had a difficult time breaking out of games or if they couldn't get on the ball, it was a difficult time for them to be able to open things up um, and, and kind of like redirect if they got off to a bad start. And, and I don't see enough changes to offset that right now especially question right. marks with having a long off season. Where is Vero? I mean, Vero is getting a little bit older, right? Um, how, where is she going to play? Is strictly a number 10? What's her supporting cast? Because I still think she has, brings great value. Um, who's going to help um, Amy Rodriguez and Kristen Press in terms of scoring load, um, knowing that there's going to have to shift minutes around. So there's still quite a few question marks with this team for me in terms of what kind of statement that they can make in a short amount of time. Jeff, they're the hosts. They're making a statement right away, you know, hosting this whole entire tournament. But <laughs> what's it going to look like on the field? Yeah, I think, I mean, similar questions. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll be the the locker room material for them. But, I mean, you know, I have a lot of questions about the roster. I think a lot of pieces that have gone out been traded away. Um, you know, you can look at the Sauerbrunn trade. Obviously, you know, that was – worked out because it was talked about among the teams and her and, and going to Portland, but the, the value back in for what has gone out, I, I haven't really seen. And I think we should mention, you know, there's still that unknown part uh, because of the pandemic. And, and we didn't really mention this with Portland, which I would say Portland and Utah, yeah. are the, the two teams mm -hmm. affected that had planned for a full season. And as best we know, had some major signings from abroad or, or at least thought they mm -hmm. did. Um, oh. And this is a, you know, this is a team similarly that's being affected by that. And, you know, maybe if, if they were here, or I guess we've got two weeks, if they happen to show up by, by some miracle, um, you know, that that changes things a little bit, but given that they're not, um, you know, I just wonder who's scoring here. Um, I think that the, even the depth from a depth perspective in this tournament, I think with, with the numbers game that they had of, of, uh, players out versus players in. I just have a lot of question marks. And I think, um, you know, we, we kind of alluded to this with Orlando, but like, I don't think anybody wants to be the one team that doesn't go to the quarterfinal. And I think you definitely don't want to be that if you're the host. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would just be double as painful, I think. In a, in a way. Um, I, I want to show this. So Jaren is saying Kelly is healthy, will be a leader on this field. I think they could potentially push her higher on the field like she did in college. Say it happens, Lori. Say Kelly O'Hara plays higher on the field. Um, who's then playing in that position? Is it, th There's no, for me, that's a hard position to fill in, especially with a back line that's already been rocked a little bit, a, a lot bit. Yeah, I, I, I actually don't foresee that happening. I don't think at this point in time in, in Kelly's career, uh, and you might see that in a few games or a mm -hmm. few or like a specific minutes in this tournament. But I actually don't see, I don't think that's a, a benefit to Kelly at this time in her career. I don't think it's a benefit to Utah Royals FC at this point in time either, given the, the, because they have quality, right? They have quality going forward. It's just about, again, who's going to be kind of that breakout player um, and is going to be providing those goals. And I don't think at this point in time you need to move Kelly up the field to do that. Um, yeah. So. What, I, I mean, I you talk about scoring goals. That. I mean, A-Rod. Can't yeah. forget about A-Rod. Oh, yeah. I mean, no doubt is A-Rod going to be, again, I think you're like looking for a support cast. So what's that look yeah. like? Yeah. Jeff, closing thoughts? Good to go yeah. here on Utah. I think, yeah, good to go. Yeah. Utah, the host. <laughs> Utah Royal FC. All right, you guys, we have made it to our W, our Washington spirit. Lori and I, teammates on the spirit back uh. in the day. Uh, okay. Guys, I forgot again. I think I started with Lori last time. Jeff, I'm going to start with you. We're closing out the show here with the spirit. Uh, thoughts on Richie, Bur Richie Burke's side? Yeah. I mean, obviously a 2019 season that um, I think was, was breakout is maybe not the term, but, but certainly a very solid season um, and, and had made a significant number of moves still to, to kind of 
I think Richie Burke trying to put his stamp on the team in, in kind of his first full off season, if you will, or, or, you know, really coming into season two here. So, um, you know, I want to see, um, you know, still a relatively young team. And I think, you know, for me, when you look at this and we talk about young players succeeding in this league and, and even collectively talking about a young team, um, that sophomore season, so to speak, of the group being together is always an important one. And some of these smaller tweaks that were made in the offseason by Richie Burke, I'm curious about. I know I think we've talked off air a bunch. I've said the name Sam Stab. Um, you know, a bunch and we never actually, we never actually said it on air. Yeah, so we have it. <laughs> point her out as, um, you know, one of the players, you know, that young group that came through the draft last year, Jordan DiBiase, um, obviously mm -hmm. Rose Lavelle still, you know, a young talent that, that everybody knows. Um, so I think pieces are there, uh, you know, kind of a team for me that, you know, again, I don't want to say could go either way, but do they follow up last year's performance um, with, you know, a, a similarly, strong showing in this tournament. Lori, your old your old club, when you're looking at the spirit, what are you thinking? I, I think they're in a really important position. And, you know, Jeff's talking about the sophomore season, and I completely agree with that. And I think there's also an addition to that is that youth. It's like you have the extra year now, and you also have that youth. And that is going to, I think, be huge in this tournament because you're going to need these players to be excited. You're going to need them to have the energy. You're going to need to have some of these players play a lot of minutes. Um, and I think you'll be able to see some of these players go for a bit longer and be able to turn over their legs quicker than some of these other teams that we have mentioned as well, who might have the experience. Um, and that will come into play in terms of managing minutes in the game and how they play. But I think this youth with this spirit team could be very beneficial. I mean, typical names, right? I, I'm still, I, I'm a big fan of Andy Sullivan and the way she plays. I think they continue to build a squad around her that can be helpful. Um, and I think we could start to see her pull the strings in the midfield even more um, than we have. Mm -hmm. Rose Lavelle, I think ha we've seen her on the international level, not so much on the spirit level consistently. So what can she do um, is a big question mark. And then yeah, the, I, think, I think the back line. I mean, because it could go either way, really. I mean, sometimes yeah. you look at it as like sophomore year, gives you a little extra experience. Or as sometimes contradictory to what we said earlier, you come in as a rookie and like have no clue what you're doing and play amazing because you're just like, whoa, right. I'm in a new environment. So this is wild. Yeah. And then sophomore year, you're like, yikes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am in my head and what have I done, right? So right. where am I? So it'll be, I'll be curious about this, but th I think there's a lot of upside and this is a team that really prides themselves on wanting to keep possession, mm -hmm. wanting to play um, an attractive style of soccer. And again, elevation, heat, youth. Yep. If you can get your team to do that, that could pay, pay off big time throughout this tournament. Yeah, that, that's one of the things I think in general with this tournament, will it be, the the young fresh legs able to recover quicker will it be the experience and changing tactics and adapting style of play that's going to enable these teams to take home the challenge cup trophy well we don't know but i think you guys we did a pretty good job of going through every single team <laughs> giving them the time that they were allotted in order for us to debate have conversation and i want to thank you guys so many quality comments i do need to get to one before we get out of here uh when we were talking about the spirit look what ebony said the best times when you were both part of the spirit Lori. <laughs> listen you know what i was gonna say is we thought that this 2020 draft seemed a long time ago Matt, how long ago does it seem when we were playing <laughs> lifetimes oh, a different life <laughs> a different life for ebony we we appreciate that uh, we do uh, appreciate we, that hi ebony yeah we cannot wait i think that is fair to say right for these games to kick off we'll have another show next week where we dig in a little bit more. I think that's, we scratched the surface on this one, but next week we're gonna dig in a little bit more about players that um, are specific to each team. One thing before we go, the tournament opener, the championship game will air on CBS and CBS All Access is going to stream all 25 games live and Twitch will stream all games for the fans outside the US and Canada. Uh, 
I just want to say thank you to Lori. Thank you to Jeff for being a part of this or giving us some good back and forth here. Uh, I'm Jordan Angeli. I'm going to send you guys off. Make sure you head over to Twitch right now. You can catch the NWSL Rewind game of the day featuring the two, uh, 2018 battle between the Chicago Red Stars and the Houston Dash. So that's it for us. I will see you guys later. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Jeff. Have a good night, everybody.